Welcome back to a beginning Dark Table series. This is um, something I've been working on and off for years, uh, mostly off because I don't put out many videos. But um, today I'm going to talk about the new ish Sigmoid display transform. I say ish because uh, I think it came out in version 4.0 and we're on 4.6 now. So it's been out a while. I've just not made any videos on it. I've seen some confusion about when to use it what to do with it so uh, I'm gonna kind of go over the ins and outs of it here the skinny of it is it replaces filmic RGB in your pipeline and it does the same job as filmic RGB in that it takes the linear data from your camera and puts it into a non-linear space for your display um, without it you know it doesn't you don't get that mapping um, you don't want it to do everything for your image. You know, you can use it to throw in some contrast and attenuate some colors and, and adjust uh, where that contrast falls between shadows and highlights, but you want to use other modules to really nail colors and stuff. By default, Filmic RGB is on. In fact, that is the default now in Darktable. Um, <clears throat> and if you go under settings and under processing, you can see that the auto apply pixel workflow defaults is scene referred Filmic. You can change that to scene referred sigmoid or display referred legacy um for referred legacy uh i'm gonna leave it on filmic for now just because that's the default but if you like sigmoid better and you want it auto applied you can do that all right first things first we're going to disable filmic on this image so we'll just cut it off um doesn't change the image too much still kind of gray and flat um first next things next second things i don't know i'm not counting uh, we want to adjust the mid-tones, which we do with the exposure model. Uh, so we open that up and we pull those all the way over. And you can watch your histogram uh, or you can look at the image or both. And you kind of get uh, where you want the mid-tones, which I would count the face and stuff as mid-tones in this. Uh, and so, uh, you know, right about there. Pretty okay, I think. Um, Next step, I usually go and do the color calibration step. Uh, this is the new white balance, and I can talk about that more later. Um, if you just do a general one, it's not going to work too well in this image because there is a lot of red in this background, and it's going to really skew the results. So what I would do is I would click this and then pick something kind of, uh, let me do it again, kind of like like not in that red. There's not a lot of great things to grab in this photo. That looks closer to right. We'll bring the chroma up to kind of flatten out, flatten it out a little bit better. And there we go. Uh, my cat is currently trying to tear down the door, it sounds like. Anyway, that's what that noise is. Uh, so, got the colors right. Uh, they're better. Now, we're going to go find the sigmoid mod. I'm gonna type SI8G and it comes up and cut it on in fact you can hover over it and you can see what it tells you what it does applies a view transform to make the image displayable on a screen or in a print um <clears throat> it uses a robust and smooth is this image editing or are we selling coffee here uh tone curve with optimal color preservation methods and you know this little help box gives you uh you know the purpose uh the input it takes in linear rgb the data and the output it produces non-linear rgb sorry i jumped ahead there anyway so now we can use this to bring in some contrast and you can use the skew uh that you don't want to get too crazy with this especially on portraits but it shifts the contrast more either you can skew it to the plus side which will put more contrast in the highlights or you can skew it to the negative side which will put more contrast in the shadows and you can see here um, I kind of like how it's putting some more in the shadows um, in fact now that we've cut on sigmoid I may want to add a little bit more to the mid-tone so we'll bounce back out here to exposure get that up a little bit more and put a little bit more contrast into the shadows eh, that's a good spot for me um, the next thing you can look at is the display luminance. Um, uh, this is, I'm doing everything in per channel mode, by the way. You can also go into RGB ratio, which kind of gives you a more, uh, which is kind of closer to the old filmic style, but it takes away your primaries down here, which I find useful. So I usually leave it in per channel. Um, target black and target white 
just like they do in filmic um this makes this remaps your black and your white so you can bring your target white and give it like a uh, and your target black and give it like a less contrasty more kind of flatter vintage look eh, if you want i don't really mess with it the next really neat trick in this uh, module are these new primaries um and what this can do is you can use this to um dilute uh attenuation basically you can use it to uh show you what it does here we can go to the vector scope and so if we do red attenuation you can see how strong that red is it's going to bring that red closer to closer towards the center which is a zero um so this is like you know pure pure white no color and this out here is strong red so you can dial in the amount of red so like that backdrop is really red so we want to pull that out a little bit so it doesn't look so much like a target advertisement um you don't again don't want to get too crazy with this i wouldn't go like all the way over here it does it makes things look weird um but you can use this to kind of dial it out a little bit and not have to stop off in rgb um uh color caliber uh, the color calibration um that was i was thinking of rgb color balance rgb so much and in fact i might bring up some more of the skew to let some more in all right so as you can see sigmoid's main advantage is speed uh if we went back and looked at filmic you can see how many different options and tabs you have here i do find that filmic on images where i want to recover more highlights is a bit better at it right now uh, but for a lot of things, I've been using Sigmoid just because of the speed. Um, from here, you can adjust things to your heart content. You can go out and use color balance RGB like you're used to. You can come in here and use one of these natural skins uh, that brings us down into... It gives us back the problem with the red being nuts, so we can kind of tone that down a little bit. But we can still bring in a little bit extra color in the dress and stuff there. Um, we can then also go and find our tone equalizer and really, really map in some shadows and some highlight uh, contrast here so we can bring up those highlights a little bit more and bring in, bring in, uh, bring down those shadows to really make those kind of, kind of, eh, not really inky, but you know, make them got some substance to them and, uh, you know, from here, you can do whatever else you want to the image. You can use your 3D LUTs. You can use uh, the RGB primaries module, the split tone. That's what I was trying to think of. Uh, you know, you can still apply your usual lens corrections. Type in lens. It'll go out and find the lens fund DB. Or, you know, I might leave them on on this image because I like that vignette on this particular image. But, as you can see, um, Sigmoid basically got us most of the way there so you know that's from where we oop, right there's where we went from sigmoid this is kind of where we ended up at we did use the tone equalizer to bring in a little bit more contrast and whatnot um again this is just kind of a speed run on how to use it um we can go out and let me grab another image and we'll edit it and we'll show you another one okay found another one we can we can do a quick edit on this and as usual we want to cut off filmic rgb so it's a bit different it's not in the studio it's outdoors color balance is a little off so it will give us more to do um color calibration so here i'm just going to do a average over the whole image maybe uh ai detect from image edges and uh, nah, i don't really like that one surfaces uh surfaces surfaces and uh yeah there we go it's daylight that makes a bit more sense we can come in later and kind of warm this up if we want to but for now let's again start off by setting our mid tones get those up a little bit now we will do our display transform sigmoid and as you can see a little flat looking so we're going to tone that back the mid tones a little bit sometimes i have to come in here and adjust those all right um and then we can come here and play with that a little bit uh target black and all that i'm gonna leave but if you wanted to make this this is kind of an outdoorsy bohemian kind of looking thing we can, we can make it look a bit a bit more a bit more uh uh vintage looking 
that. I'm gonna leave the primaries alone in this one. Uh, maybe I'll bring a little bit of red attention. Good, there we are. Now, we're gonna find our friend, the tone equalizer. Click on that. All right, and we're going to bring in a little bit more from where we flattened out those blacks a little bit, or um, kind of hollowed them out. Bring down a little bit of your of your uh, clipping and your highlights there. Uh, I like to cut on the color judging mode here with the uh, white border to help me make decisions. Um, and now, back to six point, add a little bit more of this. And that's the thing, I bounce back and forth between modules and that's okay to do. Sometimes you adjust something down the pipeline and then you're like, mm, I don't like how that's playing, so I'm gonna go back and change things. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is try to do some RGB primaries. And this is kind of a um, another preview here. This is another new module, uh, but I like using this for split toning or color grading. Color grading was the word I was trying to think of earlier. I, um, like I said, brain no work good. Um, I have sometimes have a hard time making, I, uh, <clears throat> what is that? It's a headache with pictures, ideas. There we go. Um, so I'm going to come in here and parametric mask this. So I'm just going to block this off where it only works on the brighter pixels. So right now, these things that are turned yellow is the part of the image it's going to work on. So I'm going to dial that in a little bit. I'm going to cut off the show mask tool. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tint that a little bit, kind of red, yellow in that area and bring that up. And you can see how it's making the face a little bit warmer. Maybe not. That's not the right. That's a little bit better. Bring that up a little bit. And in fact, if you really want to get fancy, you can make a new instance of RGB primaries here. You can go back to the uh, parametric mask. We'll cut on um, the show mask feature here. And we can go at it the other direction. So we can drag this input slider all the way almost over to where it only selects your um, darker pixels in the image. So uh, maybe a little bit there. All right. And then we can tint these uh, blue. So we can get that a little bit of um, I don't know, kind of that faded old picture look. To adjust that out there, I'm gonna feather that the mask a little bit. I'll show you what that does. The feathering kind of softens the mask edges a little bit, so it's not so uh, so so darn just like a hard cut. And so then you add just a little bit of the blue to the shadows and the darker areas. We can cut that on and off, and you can see the effect it's having. Uh, maybe too much of one. We'll turn it down a little bit. Maybe cut it out of some of those pixels. Go back to the other instance of this and feather that mask a little bit. Yeah, we got there. Yeah, it just softens that up a little bit. And there you go. You have something that looks kind of nice, I think, um, from just a few clicks in the Sigmoid module really kind of shines here again in this speed uh, where you can get something close to what you want without having to fill with a lot of settings. Filmic is a lot more mm, not really powerful but um, it gives you far more options and you can like I said for blowing out highlights and stuff I like to work with it a little bit better. Um, but otherwise I've been using Sigmoid quite a lot especially with the RGB primaries like you just saw to do some color grading. Like I said we started before color grading we had that after it, we've got that. Um, he, he looks a little cold there. There, the face is warmed up a little bit, and the rest of the image still has that kind of old faded look to it. Um, and you can adjust this to taste. Like I said, we can come back in here. We can bring in more density in those shadows if we really wanted to. Um, go into Sigmoid and drag that target black down a little bit. There we go. I think that's. It. Um, but I'll be here fiddling with it all day. But that's just a couple of things to show you kind of how simple and quick the Sigmoid module is. There's literally two sliders. You can use the attenuation to make uh, overrepresented colors look a little bit less uh, bad uh, in your in your thing. If I can find some blue LED pictures, I'll try to show that. But um, that is Sigmoid, and it is uh, a lot a lot more straightforward than Filmic RGB. I'll probably show that in the next video. This is a comparison, but um, thanks for watching.
leave a comment um, if you've got any questions or if I did a poor job. I'm a little out of practice, so sorry if this is kind of all over the place. I just grabbed the mic and went for it. So um, get out there, take some pictures, and edit them, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.